Hello everybody, and this is crazy. I got the car back, and had to kind of sell it for some life stuff, and was able to buy it back uh, basically right after one a lady hit me and told my car. This thing came up for sale, so I bought it back. And we are going to finally, finally finish this project that we started six years ago. And that's just the way it goes. So we've got a couple things that need to be fixed. Um, the previous owner probably didn't work on cars and there's a couple things that we have to fix. And then we're going to upgrade some things, including a standalone ECU and a bigger turbo. And it's time to party. So come along with me. I'll show you everything that we gotta do. And I'll just take you for a ride along today. Uh, and show you some of the problems and then from then we'll start building this thing back better. So come on Okay, I'm gonna have to talk loud because this car is loud But we've got a couple things to take care of um, one thing is um, the steering wheel uh, at Trying to go straight is slightly off center. So we're gonna have to pull the steering knuckle off and realign that Okay, so I'm in the car, and I'm not sure if you can hear this, but as I let off the throttle and coast, and then push the throttle back in, you can hear this grinding, like. It's like a ta 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 So I've replaced the uh, first thing I thought it was, which was the drive shaft. And it was not the drive shaft. And uh, so that leaves me to think that this is probably a center diff problem, which this car actually has a viscous coupler instead of a center diff, because it's not a uh, SDI six speed. It doesn't have DCCD. But uh, so I'm gonna have to pull the back plate off of that center diff, I think, and see what's wrong in there. And it does do a popping when you're turning in full lock. And that's one of the other uh, symptoms. I don't know if you can hear. As I'm starting, as I'm slowing down, you can vaguely hear this. Shoo, 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 shoo. So I've got to get that fixed. And that's what I'm going to do probably first. Um, I've already replaced a couple things. The shifter linkage was messed up um, and the drive shaft. But uh, it's time to get this thing back running now as it's cooling off and the weather here is not a uh, 105 degrees every day okay i'm back home and i just thought i'd give you guys a recap of the car we have a 6266 completely closed deck block built uh, extra strong pistons um, stage two cams and plus one millimeter valves we've got dash eight fuel line running back from the tank with two walbro fuel pumps um, and front mount battery relocation with our cash can sitting here and a couple of other goodies so that's that's the lowdown of the car it's time to go bigger turbo the 6266 is uh, running out of breath and we've got some other work to do okay we're back home obviously first step get the car jacked up however you need to do that make sure it's secure and safe and then the first thing we're going to do is drain the transmission and then take the mid pipe off and then any other things, maybe the drive shaft, uh, to get to where we need to get. And I will show you all the steps for that here in just a minute. Okay, here we are under the car. Um, this is the transmission. You can see the downpipe. We're at the front of the car looking back. Um, and this is the transmission, and this is the drain bolt. Um, it's really curious because my last car had a T70, which is a Torx bit, and this is like a 20 mil. Uh, probably 21 I think it's I've got a 1316 which seems to fit great um, 
because it's what I had in my hand. But uh, I'm assuming it would be a 21. Um, so uh, I'm going to get that undone and put my drain pan underneath it and drain out all the uh, transmission fluid first before I crack this thing open. Okay, we've cracked this bolt loose. We're going to drain this transmission fluid out. And I promise you, uh, it's gear oil. And uh, you get this crap on your clothes, and uh, it's never going to come out. You're just going to smell it for the rest of your life um, on your clothes, even if you wash them. So be careful getting this stuff out. It's pretty gross stuff. Um, but as you can see, we're draining out. I'll get a better angle of that. And the car's jacked up, so it's draining out on one side. Um, but that's a pretty typical look for drain for drain stuff. And the other thing you can do is check this plug to see if there's any bits of metal on it. Uh, it's magnetic, so there's a few little shavings of metal, but it's nothing, no big chunks. So we're not doomed yet. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't see that very well. But uh, so we're gonna keep on moving. We're gonna move back to the uh, tail end of the transmission where the drive shaft is and start taking stuff off from there. Okay, now we are under the car. We're gonna go ahead and remove the mid pipe and this heat shield. And then up above it is the uh, drive shaft. So your mid pipe is probably different than mine. This one was a custom build, but essentially there's two bolts here uh, where it connects and then there's two bolts somewhere back before it gets to the mufflers. And then there's four bolts to this heat shield. Uh, the bolts on the heat shield are 12s for me uh, and 14s for my down pipe. So, um, and I believe they're 12s on the drive shaft too, but we'll show you all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo these bolts and the two bolts at the back of my mid pipe right there and uh, get that out of the way. Okay, we got the heat shield out. Now it's just left to take this dri uh, drive shaft out, which is two bolts right there. And then back towards the diff is four bolts. And you may have to put your car in neutral. Um, I've never had a hard time reaching all four, uh, but sometimes you have to put one of the tires off the ground uh, at the rear in order to swivel that around. So we're gonna work on taking the drive shaft out and move on from there. Okay, I've got the uh, drive shaft mount off. I've got it disconnected from the diff at the rear. <clears throat> now this is where you're gonna need a drain pan. And we're just gonna, let's see if I can do this one handed, yank this sucker out. like so and let that drain off okay got some things apart and I'm realizing that I'm going to have to take off the transmission mount from the transmission because this little tail let's see if I can get the light this little tail right here is not going to let me get to there's a roll pin right there. There you go. To take this this off that sleeve, and that needs to come off so that this entire tail section can come off of the transmission. Um, I thought maybe I could get away with it. Um, fun fact: to take this off, if you <laughs> if you don't want to lower the transmission mount, uh, you take off this boot, uh, this little rubber uh, bushing. That's a cart boy one, your factory one will look a little different, but it's just two bolts. Um, you take that off and then this will pull out of that slide right there because otherwise this screw will hit your tunnel, transmission tunnel. Um, so we got that out of the way and we're just gonna have to get this out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a jack on a point on the transmission and jack it up 
um, and then take off these last two uh, bolts. I think they're 17, so I might be wrong. Uh, and then unbolt this from the transmission to drop the whole transmission mount uh, off. And that should give me a clear path uh, to get my punch up into um, that pushing knuckle, whatever you want to call that. So um, that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, be careful because once you start lowering the transmission, uh, this is going to start leaking a lot more. Uh, and this stuff is nasty. You don't want it on you. So um, just be wary uh, that this stuff smells and your wife or girlfriend will hate the smell of it um, even more than you do and tell you you stink for three or four days after doing this project. So just a heads up. Okay, trying this again without hitting stop. Um, I got the first roll pin out with this punch. It's a 3 16th punch. Uh, make sure you use the right size because if that sucker gets wedged in there, good luck getting it out. Um, here's what the roll pin looks like in case yours goes flying like mine did. Um, and so there's another roll pin to get to. Uh, and again, I took off this back plate right here that holds the, this guy. Um, these three bolts and I took the transmission mount off because it sticks out pretty far in the back so I took off these two nuts and the um, kind of cross member that bolts up into here uh, I've got a jack with a piece of wood holding up the transmission although that shouldn't be too big of a problem uh, because it's still bolted to the motor and the mounts and the pitch stop are still intact um, I think I'm going to have to probably undo the v-band that holds my downpipe on uh, you may not have to deal with that but i can't really move this guy all the way out of the way so um i'm gonna get this other roll pin off next and i'll let you kind of know what size i use for that okay that wasn't actually too hard i used a uh, 5 16th to push that thing all the way out i actually started it with a quarter inch um to get it moving and um, that's what it looks like just a bigger version of what we had and then this is free hopefully to slide off of this thing looks like gotta pop that huh. it's a little harder than i anticipated i might have to actually take this nut off uh, to get this out of the way because it's running into itself but that's a that's a small issue at this point so let me zip that off real quick and i'll get back Okay, I got this off. The reason I didn't take this one off is you run into the uh, transmission tunnel. So this is off now, and we should be able to slide this right off. Look at that. Now we are ready to take our back plate off, other than me moving my uh, downpipe out of the way, which I'll take care of that real quick. Um, and it's just gonna be moving all these screw, all these bolts. Uh, around this tail housing um, to take them all out and so that's what's next and once again I will tell you now get your drain pan ready because once you crack this open it's gonna puke out all the gear oil that's been sitting back here okay here we are again we've got all the bolts sorry about that got all the bolts out actually had to grab an uh, impact to get the top one out um, but they're all out now you have to separate this thing out, which is going to be a trick. Uh, you can see, like I said, some gear oil is starting to leak out, but uh, there's a, like basically a whole mess of RTV that we're going to be fighting to get this thing out. So that's kind of the next goal, um, is to get this thing separated. And then we're there. Okay, we got it separated. There was one little piece that I didn't know about. There's a hole here and another one right there where these little dowel pins are. And I had to punch them out with my punch uh, in order to just pop this thing separate, separate. And now we just let this thing drain. Uh, and it should slide off once I get everything right out of the way. 
But I'm gonna let it drain for a bit because this crap's nasty. And I'm in no hurry to smell like crap for the rest of the week. Okay, sorry I didn't get more of that on video. Uh, it's hard to film and uh, take this crap off. This is my problem. That broken piece is a roller bearing. Um, and one fell into the uh, drain pan. I'm just going to sit here and let this drain, but I've got the center diff and the tail part out. I had to finagle it quite a bit. I had to push the center diff uh, back in as the tail, um, tail cover wanted to come out. Uh, and I will show you what I pulled out in just a second. Okay, here's what I pulled out. This is... This doesn't go here. So this is your tail shaft. See how that turns? And getting little chunks of stuff coming out of the center diff, which I think is the problem. Um, and essentially, this. Fits on like that and attaches to the output shaft and the transmission. And best I can figure is these little uh, roller bearings, these pin bearings are completely busted. Um, but it seems like maybe the center diff is okay. I'm gonna go ahead and replace it anyways. And that's how that works. So basically what was happening is a chunk of bearing was in, in here. You could feel where it's supposed to be um, and was jumping around. But I'm surprised at actually how well everything is. Um, like these are in fine shape, maybe a little loose. I'll probably go ahead and see if I can take that to a shop and replace that. But everything else seems to be in stellar shape. So. Um, all things considered, I'm actually pretty pleased. Um, the next trick will be getting it back together, of course. Um, which, who knows how long that'll be. That'll probably be a part two, because this is going to start getting pretty long. Um, otherwise, um, there was a ring that goes here that came out. Uh, where did I put it? I already lost it. I think it's sitting over there by the other pile of junk. But there's a, there's a uh, spacer ring. There's already one here, but there's two that stack on top of each other. So there's that one. And then there's one more that sits on top of that. Just something to be aware of. It's a little piece. It's easy to lose. I threw it on something else. But uh, overall, I'm actually pretty pleased. Um, this, this bearing seems okay. That one seems a little loose. Let's do some play in it. So this is the part where I can finally start ordering things and replacing what needs to be replaced. The biggest trick for me is going to be finding a center diff for a 2009 Forester uh, STI. It's a JDM car. Um, should be the same as the Spec B 6B, but we'll have to find that out. Uh, the, la the last two dealerships I've called with part numbers don't have them. Um, so it's going to be one of those fishing expeditions. Worst case scenario, there's a guy in Australia that will gladly sell me one. So anyways, that's the conclusion to getting this thing apart. Um, I've got to go get washed up and uh, order some parts. And then I can finally get this thing back together and to stop making hideous noises. So thanks for all for watching. There will be a part two to this. Uh, once I get all the parts in and put it and start putting it back together.